There actually was another film that I also saw that um, caught me by surprise. I, I don't think it's as uh, interesting as Empire Lyle or Megan. Sisu Barbie even, but um, a friend of mine who actually is the co-host who does my podcast with me, he actually invited me to go ahead and uh, see The Blue Beetle. I saw it on IMAX, which is the first IMAX film I saw in 17 years. The last one I saw it was Open Season. That was maybe like 16, 17 years, but yeah, it was a long time ago. I don't remember a lot about Open Season other than that. Maybe it was a little bit more wild head in some animations. It was PG, but um, I couldn't tell you much else other than that. Um, it's actually one of Sony Pictures' better films, in my opinion. I know people go on about Into the Spider-Verse, but uh, Open Season probably has the upper hand. But getting back to uh, Blue Beetle, the thing that caught me by surprise, in the same way that The Blackening did, was how... Um, woke and quite on the nose of the uh, dystopian themes. It almost plays like Robocop meets Elysium and Iron Man and Ant-Man, because Ant-Man has some, uh, you know, quite charged elements, because it deals with a man who just got out of prison, can't get a job, can't make any money, can't see his daughter because of custody reports and the courts. Uh, this one deals a, a very openly with you know, you thought you dream, you went to university to get skills so you can get a good job, but then you leave with debt, you have to take a shit job. That shit job, you know, you may find a surprise or two, but then you, you know, left off and you have nothing to turn for. But, you know, in the grand scheme of things, because he uses a zero superhero narrative, there's something in it that uh, helps this pretty much broken young man find a sense of purpose and try to help uh, provide for his family and ultimately he becomes this sort of insect like uh, shape shifting thing that can create anything that he wants including double edged swords literally and um <coughs> these blast weapons you know it's all sci-fi fantasy stuff but the sci-fi fantasy stuff actually in my opinion is not as interesting as the political themes and elements in this Palmera city so called the Palmera which looks like a mix between Miami and Los Angeles. And the fact that it's very much a film that has Latin American or sort of Chicano, Mexicano influences in mind is very um, muy interesante, mi amigo. Um, there is no film quite like this in my lifetime. I mean, we've had black superheroes. I don't think we've had gay ones, at least not so high profile. We've had it. Bollywood superheroes, even like with Krish, a uh, Latin American superhero, that's uh, <laughs> really something. Um, but then again, you know, Hollywood has to do that whole diversity tick boxes, which I think is awfully cynical, but you can't help them for trying, really. But uh, this is the first superhero film I saw in three years. The last one I saw was um, The Birds of Prey at the cinema, and then the, the Suicide Squad I saw on Max, or HBO Max, which is fine. I certainly thought it was better than the, the other Suicide Squad movie, but uh, uh, it, was, it seemed like a cynical cash cow. And under any other circumstances, I would have never gone to see a movie like this, but he invited me to it, it was IMAX, and the tickets were expensive, and we got some good seats out of it, you know, but usually, because on a Monday, we got the discount for those premium seats at the IMAX, and I thought, wow, I feel like a king, you know, having been to all these great cinemas, like the Rio, and the one at the Grove in Los Angeles, the one that my grandparents used to live called the Royal Cinema, I've been to a Curzon, and I went also to BFI South Bank to see Variety, which is like, like a retrospective film. I thought I'm on top of the fucking world, and you know, Blue Beetle, even though that's not a film I would have chose, you know, because I did see Blue Beetle at the same time as I saw The Blackening, uh, made me feel like, hmm, it's really getting something there. And it's actually, uh, um, I think it's the themes of the film itself that made it more interesting. The fact that a lot of the uh, dialogue is on Espanol. Some of it doesn't even have sus, uh, titulos, no subtitles. 
It makes for very sort of engaged viewing. And I hope audiences who are Latino, Hispanic, or Latinx, with the X at the end, or Chicano, Cubano, Boricora, um, Los Otros Cosas, Mi Amigo, Mi Cosas, Mi, mi Corazón. So you get something out of this, even if it is take out the politics and the references to invasions in Granada and uh, violence against the Guatemalan government, references to immigration and police presence in, in neighbourhoods that are soon to be gentrified for rich uh, white fellas. You got yourself quite a chooser. Um, this is certainly one of the most um, woke or politically minded superheroes I, films I've seen since Black Panther. So DC's done themselves a good job here. I don't think Joker counts. That's that does that is not a superhero film, but as far as I'm concerned, this is probably one of their best ones that they've done since uh, Watchmen. <laughs> That's a tall order to say. So I know, you know, a lot of people like Aquaman and stuff, but I think this and the birds of prey certainly represent the more interesting elements of DC Comics and Teen Titans Go the Movies more so than the Batman stuff, so what can you say? Marvel's gone to shit. I didn't even bother watching Quantum Mania. But I did see uh you know Batman and Black Panther, which are the better ones. But Blue Beetle probably like the equivalent of Batman and Black Panther for DC for me it's like Watchmen and uh, the birds are playing this Joker and V for Vendetta I don't count you know Teen Times Go to the movies that's another one uh, Joker and V for Vendetta are sort of outliers because they're more vigilante films films about society oh Blue Beetle does with society but it's more within the safe confines of, you know, the Cape Sci-Fi Fantasy Crusader. I've said my piece, and I'm going to be signing off. See you on the other side. Maybe you might see me review for Equalizer 3. <laughs>